Welcome back. Hey guys, it's Rishi once again. And today we're back with expanding and factorizing. Now this is your basic algebra. Now algebra is very useful in the modern world where mathematics is used extensively. And this includes expanding brackets, collecting terms and substituting into the formula. So let's dive into this right away. So now, when you're expanding brackets, let's say we're asked to work out the value of three bracket two plus four. Now the usual method would be to evaluate the bracket first, which means we have two plus four equals six, and then three times six would be 18. Now you could instead multiply the number outside the bracket by each of the two numbers inside the bracket. So that again would be three times two, which is six, and three times four, which is 12, giving you 18. And that also gives the same result. And this strategy is particularly important when we have to work out the value of a bracket containing letters, such as three A plus two. So now you must be thinking, why can't I use strategy one instead of strategy two? But this is where it all becomes clear. When we have a bracket containing letters, it would be impossible for us to evaluate it like method one, because we cannot simplify a plus two. So using the second method here is much clearer. However, this would leave us with three times a and three times two, which we can then write as three a plus six. So when you are asked to expand or multiply out an algebraic expression with a bracket, this is the method that you must employ. So now let's take a look at one more example here. And let that be to expand two bracket three y minus four. Now in this specific example, the rule is that the number outside the bracket must be multiplied by the numbers inside the bracket and then the results must be added together. So what do we need to do? We need to multiply the number outside the bracket by the numbers inside the bracket and then add them together. So that's going to be two times three y. So let's write it out, plus two times minus four. So again, we know two times three y gives us six y and two times minus four is minus eight. So now we know that would give us 6y minus 8 because a plus and a minus gives us a minus. And that would be our answer. So I hope that was a clear introduction into what expanding and factorizing looks like. Now we have a, a series of questions here that we will be going through. Please don't forget that repetition is key here. So try your best. Don't forget to pause the video and attempt the question and then press play to see the answers. So without further ado, let's get started. Question number one, expand seven two x plus seven. So again, we're going to take the same method here where we will multiply out the number outside the bracket by all of the numbers inside the bracket. So we start off by doing seven times two x, which again gives us 14 x, and then seven by seven, which gives us 49. And there we are. But now 1b asks us to factorize. Now, if you guys have seen our expanding and factorizing quadratics video with watts, then this should definitely be useful. But if you haven't, go and view that video first because you'll then be able to understand what factorizing is. But nevertheless, I'm still going to go through it in today's video. So factorizing is merely the opposite of expanding. This is where your answer will be in the same form as what we started with, with 1a. And what we need to do here is find one number that is common between the two numbers we've been given, which in this case are 3y and 12. So we know that they're both divisible by 3. So we can have 3 outside the bracket. And now we need to multiply 3 by a series of numbers, which then give us 3y and 12. 
So we know that 3 times y gives us 3y. And we know that 3 times 4 gives us 12. And by doing so, this then gives us the same expression that we started with in 1a. So you can now see factorizing 3y plus 12 gives us 3, bracket open, y plus 4. Okay, let's move over to 2a. So now we need to expand once again. So when we're expanding, we know we'll have 5a times a, which is 5a squared, because we have two a's, and 5a times minus 6, which will be minus 30a. So that's 5a squared minus 30a. And now let's go ahead and solve. So when we're solving, as you can see, we're finding out the value of the letter B. So we now know that we have to expand each section. So we're left with 4B plus 8, because 4 times B is 4B, and 4 times 2 is 8. And that equals 24. And now we have an additional step here. And this is where we need to calculate the value of B. So we're going to take away 8 on both sides. So we're left with 4B, which equals 16. And bearing in mind, 4B actually means 4 multiplied by B. So right now it's a multiplication, which means if we take it to the other side, we need to divide both sides by 4. So we're left with B, which equals to 4. And that is our answer. And now a way to actually check this would be to substitute our value. So we have 4, bracket open, but now we know that B equals 4. So we'll put 4 plus 2, which equals 24. So now we're in a position where we don't have a letter, we have numbers. So we can go with our method 1, which is 4 plus 2, which gives us 6. And then we can times it by 4, which gives us 24. Or alternatively, we can have method 2 here, which simply has 4, and you times 4, which gives you 16, and 4 times 2, which gives you 8 and you still get the same answer, which is 24. So I hope that was clear. Let's now move into question 3a. So now we need to factorize. So again, we need to find one number that is common between 12 and 8. And we can also see that in this occurrence, they both have the same letter m. So we know that 4 goes into 12 and 8, and they also share the letter m. So now that will be outside our bracket. So now we need to have 4m multiplied by 3, which gives us 12m, and 4m multiplied by 2, which gives us 8m. But now we have a squared here, which means we need to also follow through with another m. So now by doing so, this gives us our final answer, which is going to be 4m bracket open 3 plus 2m. And then part b, very much same as uh, 2b where we need to solve for n. So let's go ahead and expand first. So remember, step one is to expand. So we'll have 3n minus 15 equals 27. That is because 3 times n and 3 times minus 5. We then go ahead and add 15 on both sides. So we're left with 3n, which equals 42. And then we divide both sides by 3 to eliminate and isolate n, which means that we're left with n equals 14, because 42 divided by 3 is 14. And there we are. As you can see, this is a two-step method. One is to expand, and two is to solve. Magnificent. Okay, question number four. So let's go ahead and do the same thing, where we're going to expand. 8 times 3s is 24s and 8 times minus 2 is minus 16. So now we have 24s minus 16. And then again, we need to factorize. So we know that we have 4, which is common in both 20 and 4. We know that 4 times t is 4t, and 4 times plus 5 is 20. So we're left with 4t plus 5. But now for 5a, we have some powers that are involved here. So let's take a deeper dive into what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight what is common. 
We now know that 5 is common in both. We know A is common and B is common. So that allows us to write this outside our bracket. So we now know we have 5AB multiplied by something to give us 5A squared B. Well, we've accounted for the 5 for one of the A's and the B. So we know that we need to account for the second A. We know it's an addition, so we put a plus sign. And now we need to do very much the same thing to get from 5AB to 15AB squared. So again, we know that it's going to be 5AB multiplied by 3. So by doing this, 5AB times by 3, we get 15AB. But we're now missing that squared, which means we need to account for another B, which I'll put at the end. And this is our answer. That again is 5AB bracket A plus 3B. Marvellous. Okay, and let's now go ahead and solve this. So again, we'll multiply out everything outside the bracket with everything inside. So we have 6C minus 48, which equals 42. I will then add 48 to both sides. So we have 6C, which is 90. And then divide by 6 from both sides. So we're left with C equaling 15. And there we are. That is our answer. So I hope you're getting the hang of this. Again, it's very much the same steps over and over again. So please repeat these steps because the more we do it, the more confident we will become. Okay, question 6a. Again, we find out that 6 is common between both of these numbers. And we know that 6 times 3x is 18x and 6 times 4 is 24. So again, this is again working on your multiplications as well as your division. So again, you should know which numbers go into other numbers without leaving a remainder. And then for part B, we need to expand. So 3 times 2y is 6y, and 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. And that's question 6 done. Okay, I'm now going to give you uh, your time to go ahead and complete questions 7, 8, and 9. Please feel free to pause the video here and then we will go through the solutions. Okay, wonderful. Let's start off with question 7a. We know we have p times p, which is p squared. And we know that p times 3 is minus 3p. And then part b, we see that 8 goes into 16 and 8. So we have 8 multiplied by 2q plus 8 times 1 is 8. Marvellous. For question 8a, we know that 2x is common between both. So we multiply that with 3x to get 6x squared. And then with 2y to get 4xy. And then for part b, we now need to solve it. So we have 2w minus 8 equals 13. And then we add 8 on both sides. So we have 2w equals 21. And then w equals 21 over 2. Or you can simply say 10.5. Marvellous. Okay. And with question number 9. So again, we can see that there's two sets of x's. So we now know that x is common in x squared and 9x. So you put x outside the bracket, followed by x inside the bracket, and your minus 9. So we should have x, bracket open, x, minus 9. And then for part b, we can simply multiply 6 by 5y, which gives us 30y, and 6 by 1, which is 6. And there we are. I hope these questions were clear. Feel free to pause the video and go back to see what I've done in order to get each answer. And don't worry, practice makes improvement, so keep up the great work. Okay, and let's finish off with our last question there, which is going to be question 10. And that again is going to be an expand and factorize. So let's start with the first one, which is 3 times 5x, which is 15x, and 3 times minus 8, which is minus 24. So that leaves us with 15x minus 24. Marvellous. And then for part B, we need to factorize this. 
which means we'll find one number that goes into 18 and 15. In this case, it will be three. We then know that we need to multiply three by six y, which gives us 18 y, and then three by five, which gives us 15. And I hope that makes sense. And there we are. That brings us to the end of our first part. I hope this video has been useful and I hope you now feel a bit more confident in terms of expanding and factorizing. Don't forget that we will be going through more complex questions in the next video. So please make sure that you share and subscribe to our channel where we will then be going through more complex topics in a bit more detail. And that way you'll be informed of every new video that is uploaded. So keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.